Very long scrimmage, probably the longest scrimmage I've ever been involved in, and it's mainly because we have enough people now to allow our number three units to get just as many reps as everybody else. Uh, usually the ones and the twos get a lot of work, and the threes, we put them in there almost sometimes just to give the ones and twos a rest, uh, considering the lack of depth in the past. But today, uh, and really all, all camp long, we've had enough threes that we've got you know 22 guys on scholarship, guys that are very talented, guys that need to be developed. They're getting developed. It's really good. Made it, you know made for a long day, but in some ways, if let's say you're the number one offense, then the twos you go eight plays, twos will go eight plays, then the threes go eight plays. So you, you're waiting 16 plays before you get back in there. So they really had adequate rest in between. It was just a long night overall because of the number of plays. And I'd say every group averaged around 40 to 45 plays a piece. So a lot of a lot of plays today. We spotted the ball in the minus 25 and drove it, minus 35, drove it, plus 50, drove it, plus 40, drove it. And these are all eight play drives that we designed. Um, then we went to third downs, uh, third medium, third long, and then we went to uh, a red zone, finished up on the plus 16, trying to score a touchdown to win the game. So uh, <clears throat> those are all the situations that we covered. Uh, just to find, uh, I know Amon had about four catches. I'm not doing all the unofficial stats, sorry about that, but uh, in, in the fall, I really don't want to give anybody a clue to uh, who's doing what, really. But uh, Cager had a couple TD catches, and, and Amon had about four or five catches. Um, I know uh, Shaq played big. He had but probably about six tackles. Um, there was there were some sacks, without a doubt, but most of them, uh, most of them really were in the third down and long category, which is you don't what you don't want to get into. Uh, and it was mostly our two and three units are actually our, our number one unit protected. I thought very well. Uh, Malik threw a couple touchdowns. I know and uh, no picks. Um, the, the other quarterbacks, I, I think, are getting there. And sometimes if you're that quarterback with the number two unit going against the number one defense, there's not much you could do but try not to fumble the ball when they hit you. And uh, so uh, a lot of times it's hard to grade when the number two quarterback is in there, when, when he's in there with the two unit. Threes on threes is more even. You know, one versus two defense is, is the one you want to be in. But... Uh, I will say I think I think Nikosi is is coming along well. Um, Jaron, you know, he just still kind of sometimes gets his head on a swivel and finds somebody and zings it to him. He doesn't always know exactly where he's going and why, uh, but he's got ability. And Weldon Weldon's really had a great camp. Um, really, only had one one day where he was off. Uh, the first four, five, I think, first five in a row, he was on fire and. Uh, really had probably the highest passing percentage of all QBs. Uh, tonight, he, uh, he didn't get on track that much tonight. But, um, you know, running the ball, uh, we didn't get we, – we got a lot of – a combination of running backs and QB run. No one really had a big day running the ball. There were some good, tough physical runs. DJ Dallas did that. Homer, as always, did that. You know, sometimes – the play's blocked for three, and he gets five, and that's a great run, you know. So there's those types of runs, but nothing broke out on the defense. Uh, if anything broke out, it was a couple quarterback scrambles that broke out when they're in pass coverage. So we got to get our rush lanes a little bit better. But um, overall, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done to this point. Uh, we got one more scrimmage a week from now, and uh, and then after that, we're pretty close to getting ready for LSU. Mike, you talked about pass protection. Did you see forward progression from the spring? When the yeah, I mean, like I said, the one unit all all fall long has been really good. Um, no no complaints there. Twos, you know, are, they're they're struggling going against the best we got. You know, those guys are pretty good. Those rushers, and uh, whether it's just coming off the edge with speed or start out with speed and then decide to go to from they call it from, go from speed to power. You're you're giving a speed rush and then you just. Turn right into the guy and run him into the quarterback. I saw a few of those. You know, and our, our tight ends, we do use our tight ends to protect at times, and they're getting they're getting knocked around, manhandled pretty good right now, uh, especially, you know, the young guys. But 
it's a combination of you know a guy like Joe Jackson just being a full grown man and them still trying to figure it out. So. Right yeah, Navon's doing much better. You know, he really. Um, I feel good about him at right tackle right now. I feel I feel good about the one unit. You know, Hayden Mahoney has had a really good camp. Um, you know, we we're thinking Benzel would really challenge him, and I think he still can challenge him. But as you would yeah, as you would imagine, he's still learning uh, what to do. Venzel is still learning. When he really learns it and can play full speed, he could probably compete a little bit harder at that spot. Uh, right this second, I would say Scaife is the, probably the sixth guy um, at one of a, a few positions, probably. Mike, you said you wanted to create the atmosphere of the game day, especially yeah. for the young guys that have never gone through this. How did you see some of the yeah. mentioned? <laughs> uh, we had kids dropping balls that don't normally drop a ball. You know, s plays are so close to being a great play, and then. You know, we just we don't hang on to the ball. There's more drop passes, I think, this day than any day in camp. It's kind of like this maybe is more meaningful than before, and if you guys just couldn't hang on to the ball. But uh, overall, there's some really nice plays made on offense, and uh, but uh, and then, and as a whole, the defense number one unit, you know, dominated their their number against the number two O, but. Number one O. If you had to say who won between one O and two D, I'd say the number one O uh, got the best of them. But it was more. It was a closer battle than our defense. One defense versus two offense. Uh, Bubba, but I think Bubba's eyes got big too. Um, you know, learning how to kick in a half a billion dollar stadium. You know, I think it was might have got to him a little bit. He struggled today. To be honest with you. Uh, in the other practices, though, he's done very well. He actually, well, he didn't make it. He kicked a, like a 57-yarder that had enough juice but just missed. But he's got a big, strong leg, and he's just got to get his reps in and get over the fact that he's the number one kicker at the University of Miami. He's got to realize that's a lot of people counting on him. Um, let's think. We had no one uh, have anything that I would be really concerned about. You know, you get guys get dinged up a little bit, and some guys go out for a minute and come back. We've had a couple guys that were, you know, kind of nursing a hammy, thought they were ready, weren't quite ready, but didn't pull it, you know, type thing. A couple guys like that. Um, I can't think. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pinkney played, didn't he? Didn't Pinkney play? Yeah, yeah, he he, he played. Um, I don't remember. To be honest with you. Do you remember who had a pick? You know who did? Red White. Red got a pick. Was that the only pick of the day? Did we know? So this was the end of week one. Yeah. You know how how would you sum up where you are right now? Um. I think we're in a good place. I think guys are fighting hard. I think they're they're working the way they need to work. I think we're uh, you know get, we'll, we'll after watching this tape we'll get closer to trying to figure out who can play and who can't. But the thing we got to remember is with the young guys, they may make huge improvement from this week to next week. Number one, we're not going to install a lot more. We're installing something new every day, every day, something new, something new. And after a while, it gets cloudy for them. Now, next week, we'll install very little. So now they can start trying to perfect it. So where they can go from week one to week two it can be a big jump, where if you have a guy that's been in the program his third year now, you know, I wouldn't expect a giant jump on some of those guys. But those young ones, those young guys, they're, they're going to definitely uh, make quick progress. Any week one movers? You know, guys that I, I hate that you know you, you get the same answer after every scrimmage. Is you, you got to look at the tape to really see. Um, it's like I told the guys before the game or before the scrimmage, especially the young guys. There's a lot of flashing going on. Guys that are flashing their ability. A flash means it you, it, it burns bright and then it kind of goes away. You know, so they're they're showing that they have the potential to be really good. But if they can't do it on a consistent basis, it's hard to get them in the game. So if, if they can, like, flash over and over and over, you know, the great players 
are consistently making those kind of plays. The great, the, you know, the great ones do that. The good ones, every so often they'll do something big and everybody will get excited, but can you do it down after down? And that's what we're working on. Uh, overall, for brand new guys, uh, they look great. I mean, they're making mistakes. They can't get lined up right sometimes and they need a little help. Uh, they have the toughest position to learn besides offensive line play and quarterback play. They're, you know, especially where Brevin is, he, he's what we call the adjuster. He, he's got to know by play where he lines up sometimes and he's got so much to process. We ask him to be an on the line blocker, run blocker, on the line pass blocker, off the line pass blocker and route runner. We got him as a on the line tight end running routes. We got him in split. We got him split out in space running routes. You know, catching bubbles, blocking for bubbles. I mean, he's he's got a lot on his plate, and Mallory has a good bit too, but not quite as much as the position Brevin is at. Nesta's doing good. You know, he's he's young. You know, he he's one of them flashers. You know, he'll flash real good, and and then he'll do something that. You can't get lined up right, but he's tough, he's physical, and we need him to get ready, so we, he's going to play, I can tell you that. Anything else, guys? Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks,